these on. Howdy folks. It has been a while, I know. Um, I've been super busy. I've got this house that I'm trying to um, get sorted out. We keep, you know, delaying the closing date and all that jazz. So that's been a wonderful uh, time consumption. Not to mention I'm still running a business, but nonetheless, I am back again. I promise I won't leave you folks as long as I have. Today we're gonna try out some trot line fishing. Now, I have trot line fished before, but this setup is gonna be slightly different the way that I set it up. So the trot line, what we're gonna do is, uh, I've got two, actually, I've got three trot lines with me, but only two are rigged up. So depending upon how much bait we catch is how many trot lines I'm gonna rig out. So I'll set them up and I'll show you guys when we're setting it up exactly how we're um, setting it up. So we may do one, we may do two, and then we're gonna go do some scouting on the island, pulling some pictures off the of cameras, um, setting some mineral licks down. Um, it looks like I am on top of some shad right now, so I should probably shut up, get my cast net out, get us some bait, so that way we can get this thing rigged up and get to trot lining. And, and once we get those uh, trot lines out, um, each line that I've got set up is uh, set up to be able to accept 25 hooks on each one and um, we're gonna go run on the island um, do our thing there and come back to check those trot lines so we'll see you here uh, in a moment once I've got us some bait secured and we'll get ready to uh, rig up these trot lines see you in a bit We were catching them like one and two at a time. How many? Oh, I don't even know. Probably a dozen at least in there. Plenty, and they're all good size too. Perfect size for the hooks that we'll be using on the trot lines. Get out of there, go in there, there we go. All right, now we're into them. We've got them kind of all over the place now. I can hear them popping. Ooh, 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 ooh. Schools of shad, schools of shad. I was starting to doubt my bait catching ability there for a second. Oh, I just threw one out. Still in my net. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what you call a catch release and then catch. Maybe I'll catch them again. Woo, there we go. A net full. Maybe one more cast like that. We'll yeah. Yeah. Let's get on. Get in my bait bucket, yo. So the key is, well, one, having a fish finder is nice. That's helpful. But oftentimes, whoo, like just like that, you see all the shad pop up out of the water. I just threw it right onto a big school. You see them popping. Oh yeah. At the top of the water. They just kind of come around and pop, pop, pop. Look at this. Whoa, that's like, the biggest catch. Yeah, it's like Maybe four two. pounds of shad in there. It all depends on conditions. And right now, you know, I'm looking at the water temps slightly chillier than it has been. So I kind of figured they'd be hanging out in a little bit more deep of the water. And there's this shelf that we're kind of riding on. And actually you can just see, they're just popping all over the top of the water. Here's a school right here. Oh, see, they all just jumped out of the water as my net came down. And this should be a good haul. Yep. Whoa. And that's what you gotta do. Oh no, shad fell out. Oh no, where'd he fall to? Oh, save the shad. Your, There's so many. Your net is so slimy right now. All right, I think we got enough shed. What do you think? I mean, I can see them popping all over the place. This is going to be a good spot to lay out the trot line too, because right here, what we've got is about, I don't know, 10 yards that way. It gets shallow, like four foot deep, and then it gets pretty shallow all the way up into the, um, into the coast, into the island. 
and out here it's about seven feet so i mean we've got kind of the shelf that we're riding on and that's what i'm going to string my my trot lines around or down i just want to get into slightly shallower water so i can have a spot to put my poles down so that's what we're going to do we're going to set out our first trot line here in just a second all right so here is my anchor pole or my you know you can tie them to a tree line or something a tree a tree limb or something along those lines but i've got this um oh i think it's a seven foot pvc pipe that i've spray painted neon orange and that is not necessary but that's kind of makes it a little bit easier to spot your um your line your anchor point from a little bit further away and then um it's always good to put or it's required in the state of oklahoma to put your um, name and address on limb lines uh, trot lines um, as well as your jug lines and stuff is such like that so i forgot the hammer so this is going to be interesting trying to get this anchored in but we've got a nice sandy clay so i can kind of push it in um, so i'm going to get that set up and then show you guys the rest of the rig uh, we're running away so i've got this trot line <clears throat> here and it um, i've got a bunch of swivels tied to it and uh, we've got it connected over to this pole this anchor pole by basically a carabiner i used a locking carabiner um, just because i don't really trust those spring clip ones very well um, they uh, they fall apart too too easily and i didn't want to have to replace them you know every every second or third time that i go out to use this equipment so we've got it locked on there and what i'm going to do is as i'm kind of unraveling this um we're going to be hooking hooks onto it and putting shad on those hooks so matthew you're on shad duty and i will yeah i'll get us rigged up as we go so you can you wrangle the shad and i'll uh I'll unravel our our trot line and get us going here. So on this 150 foot line, we have, this is the main line here, and we have these little plastic stops. This is how the trot line came, came already with these barrel swivels on it. And I just added these leader lines, um, or basically the hook lines. And then on the end, I put a swivel, a uh, snap swivel, a clip on it. That way I can take the hooks off uh, after I'm done and when I store it, I'm not having to store it with hooks on it and we're using circle hooks um, I believe these are five aught circle hooks But just about yay big and your your hook size is gonna vary depending upon the size of catfish you're targeting and um, And and really any fish it kind of depends on what you're targeting, but I mean Typically with a trot line, the main target is catfish, and um, we're hoping for nice good quantity of catfish as well. That way we can have ourselves a big old fish fry. And these, uh, these shad are, they don't necessarily have to be alive to use them in a trot line. Again, depends on what you're targeting. Um, in this particular case, catfish have no problem at all eating them when they're dead. And once we get these all rigged up and hooked up, we'll put the weight on the end of it and then we'll run this line out, get it nice and tight and drop it in the spot that I want to. I want to get it into deeper waters than we're in now. And uh, the trick to doing this is trying to do it in a manner that doesn't get everything all tangled up and is also very wise if you are goodness gracious you slippery shad it's very wise to um if you're out if you're doing trot lining alone be very careful is what i have to say because this can't it can be dangerous you've got 150 feet of line you've got uh you know 25 hooks on one line set you could get tangled up you could get hooked up you could easily drown doing this if you're not very very careful and paying attention to what you're doing if you are doing this alone it is wise to keep a knife on you just in case 
um, in case you get wrapped up and you get tangled up and you're in the water you can get yourself unhooked because even if you're wearing a life jacket it doesn't do you a ton of good if you're all kinds of wrapped up in a line and you get taken now granted where we're sitting right now we're sitting in three feet of water um, though though you can drown in three feet of water um, it'd be quite the feat it'd be quite tricky for a six foot for a guy who's six foot one to drown in three feet of water not impossible um, just tricky is all and um, so just be careful that's my word of caution whenever it comes to trot lines you're working with a lot of line a lot of potential to tangle yourself up you got hooks could get hooked in you especially if you've got your weight on the line already you're working with relatively heavy weights usually i'm not working with about well i mean i am working with a relatively heavy weight um it's probably about five or six pounds but it's um it's not even attached to the line yet that's the last thing that i add on um because you know probably probably makes the most sense to uh to have as the least amount of danger to deal with at a time but we're almost done here getting this line rigged up so uh once we get the remainder of these shad on this trot line we will get the weight hooked up and check back in with you folks the weight that i'm working with here it is a 32 ounce or something yeah um, it's a one quart mixing container you could use solo cups this is just um what i had going on for me here and um it's a uh it's just concrete um mixed in with uh or and then i put a little eyelet in there and just held it in place so you can use like a popsicle stick or you can use in my case i use a chopstick just run it across there mix the concrete pour it in set this big old eye hook in there and now you've got yourself a five six pound weight or whatever i'm gonna pull the anchor up and then we're gonna stretch this thing out and we're ideally attempting to stretch it out not get snagged on anything along the way and put it out into about a kind of on an angle do about get it into like seven feet of water or so so we've got kind of hopefully varying depths as we go along that shelf new plan uh, we just spent a whole bunch of time unraveling a mess and so we are going to we've got this set up and i kind of had a feeling that that was going to be the case with the um, trot line the way that it came out like it came with those little uh, plastic spools that it's on so i've got this jug that i've wrapped it around it's a little bit easier this way and so we're gonna as we're unspooling it um, we've already got 25 shad pre-hooked ready to go and we'll just be putting them on as we're unraveling it so that way we can keep ourselves from getting snagged up in a tree branch like we just did so i'm gonna get us off the anchor and start uh, drifting the direction that we want to and keep this line nice and tangle free um so i don't end up in the mess that i was just in all right so now we have got our hey matthew we're tangled up back there hurry up hurry up hurry up get us untangled i think it's just hooked got it all right Woo. all right so now that we've got our line strung out we have bait and hooks on each of our little slots here and this is our trot line hooked to that pole way back there and we've got shad every two feet um, now what i want on the end of this is i want a weight and we would already mentioned the weight before so now we've got our weight on here and i'm gonna run this line out um we are we've got it staked that pole our little uh our basically our limb our tree of sorts that we've attached it to is that pvc pole that pipe is sitting in about oh two or three feet of water and we're basically going to be wanting to fish this cliff or this shelf here as it kind of drops off into seven foot 
and then on to eight feet. So I'm just gonna stretch this out towards the, um, away from the shoreline and we'll get it a little bit on the tight side. So that way, so that way we're nice and stretched out all the way out here. And that's about how I'm gonna want it. And then we're just going to set or go. And now our line should be sinking nice and good. We're presently in seven and a half feet of water right here. And over yonder where our pole is, is in three feet of water. So we have varying water depths that we're fishing with this trot line. And um, so that should give us, you know, uh, if, if say, you know, seven feet isn't working out but the fish are the catfish are hanging out in three feet of water we'll have that covered because we've got the line basically half in three feet of water and then the other half is in you know four five six seven eight feet of water about seven feet of water or so so we're gonna leave that there um for the better part of the rest of this day uh, for the next several hours actually at the very least we got to go do some hunting related items we've got to go check on some things uh, on the island check the cameras um, I'm actually gonna label a few blinds that's uh, a new regulation here in Oklahoma anything that you put on public land like pop-up blinds deer uh, tree stands and uh, trail cameras you have to put um, your uh, basically your hunting license number on it um, I'm also going to be adding my phone number and my name on the off chance though But if you don't have it labeled then the wildlife department can just take your stuff and sell it at auction <clears throat> so um, So uh, there were a couple things that I forgot to label so I'm going back out there labeling that anyhow, we're gonna let that trot line sit and um, we'll We'll check on it here in a little. Oh, I'm already seeing it. Oh man, it's already. We already got something. Look at that. Did you see that? Did you see that? Uh, see it bounce? I don't know if we can see it on camera. It's too far out. We already got something. So we'll let that sit for a little bit while longer, I guess, because um, I don't want to do all that work to catch one or two fish. I mean, look at it. It's going to town. All right. Um, so we already know we've got something. We'll let it sit there and uh, we're gonna do some uh, do some other uh, outdoorsy activities. All oh, right, I don't even know what language I just attempted to speak. <clears throat> Let's try that again. All right, folks, um, we have just trudged all over these woods uh, for the past several couple hours, couple hours, uh, two or three hours or so. Um, we had to mark some trails so that way the because it's a very very um, Untouched island by people so there's not really an established trails So we had to mark them um, so we could find some of our hunting spots as well as checking the uh, cameras and get some pretty good photos on them lots and pigs. lots of pigs so many pigs I set a camera up on a mud wallow and uh, I'll, I'll put some up on screen and you'll see there's tons of pigs out here. Um, anyhow, also had to label some cameras. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the state of Oklahoma, this is a new regulation this year. And anything that you put on public land, uh, i.e. your blind or your camera, needs to be marked with your um, wildlife department customer ID number, which is basically your hunting license number, has to be marked with that conspicuously. Um, so we had to put some labels on some things uh, that I had forgotten to put labels for. Anyhow, that's just, uh, that's just what we've been up to. So we are going to, um, we're finding our way back now. We're actually kind of testing out our trail markings to more or less see if uh, they are working and I think they I think they are because we we haven't had to pull out the GPS or anything so we're gonna hop back in the boat we'll see you guys back down to the water and we're gonna run over there and check our trot line and see um, what we've got 
on the other end of our trot line. See you folks later. As we are approaching our trot line, we have noticed that it is pulled slightly in a different direction than we set it out. So that, that could be a good sign. Putting these gloves on because more likely than not, I'll be handling catfish. And when you're handling a lot of catfish, it is certainly nice to not get too slimed up. Yeah, the line did move. It was facing like away from us. Well, well, I mean, when we set it out, it almost immediately got hit. So, and I can see tension being pulled on it. So, here's the question is, what side should we get on? I think we should get on this side. Yeah, it's getting pulled. Oh yeah, there's a fish on there. Oh boy. I think there's a fish on one of the, the early hooks, like one of the... The beginning? Yeah, one of the beginning ones, because I think we're startling it. Oh, this yeah. Pulled hard. Oh, yeah. This fish is mad. Okay. All right. Let's... Uh, grab the line. Let's grab the line here. See if I can do so without tangling it up in the trolling motor and stuff. I mean, I guess I could use my gaff hook. But that would be, that would make it too easy. Okay. Grab the line. Oh yeah, there's, it's there's a fish. There's, oh my oh, goodness. Oh, we got two. We got a couple of them. All right. Let's try and bring them around on this side of the boat. And uh, open up the, oh my goodness, that is not a catfish. What? That. That's a carp? That carp? I, I'm going to have to look into that one. Is this a carp? It sure looks like one. Has a bigger mouth than mine. Oh, it's making noise. All right. Um, pliers. Let's get some pliers handy. Oh, your eyes messed up, buddy. Oh, he's hooked deep. Yeah. He got got. What on earth are you? You don't look like a carp. You're a pretty fish, whatever you are. I think you are a carp. I think this is a carp. Open up. I'm, I mean, I'm, I may be stupid. It's just not a type of carp I've ever seen. Open up the cooler. Got a lot of bait missing. That's for sure. I don't really feel any vibrating tension. It could just be the could just be the weight on the end of the line. Oh, we got another one. Oh, he's a good sized one. He's definitely a keeper. Yeah, yeah that's a catfish. Oops. Oh, we have two. There's a couple two of them. More. Oh, no. oh. oh, he's a keeper for sure. This guy. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Get on in here. Oh, this guy's probably up. All right, fat daddy. <laughs> oh, he's I having. Love the noise. He's chit-chatting with us. <laughs> yeah, it's getting pulled on. Watch out, I don't want you to get tangled up in this. And then going for a swim. Definitely had a buffet on the shad. Oh, I see one hook with the shad left on it. 
Oh, no way. <laughs> there is one. All right. Let's run down the line some more. See what else we got. That's funny that the shallower ones did a little bit better. I was expecting the deeper ones to get the most fish. Now, again, as a word of caution, be absolutely careful when running these trot lines. I have one finger on here and I'm paying very close attention to what's going on with the hooks. Actually, I think that's the weight. I think that's all we got because this should be the weight down here. Well, four fish, not a bad day. One. Yeah. Man, that's dirty. Not bad. We're gonna get this trot line wrapped up and put away all safe and sound like. Um, and uh, and uh, then we're probably about done for the day, honestly. Does it count if you, and, uh, if I baited it and you put the hooks on, does it count if you and me caught it? I guess it was a team effort. All right, that's that folks. Got it all wrapped up. And as I'm wrapping it up, I'm taking all the hooks off. Um, this just makes it a whole bunch easier to uh, deal with whenever we're going to set it up. So we can hook all of, we can kind of bait all of the hooks without it being on the line and uh, not run the risk as we're taking it out, getting snagged by a hook on our hands. And, um, so that's that. Now we just get our line loose. Disconnected our line and pull up our trot line pole. There you have it folks. That is how you trot line. All right, we have decided that that one uh, oddball fish is um, a carp of some kind. I'm not exactly sure what exact species of carp it is, but I think it's a type of carp. It's definitely not any game fish that we have in Oklahoma that has any specific regulations requiring us to release them. And considering it looks very carp-like and it doesn't look like one that um, I'm super familiar with, probably better safe than sorry that we keep it um, because if it is an invasive carp species we don't want to put it back in the water so um, and carp isn't like the greatest tasting fish but honestly you can you can make anything taste good if you cook it right trim it up right and whatnot so uh, we interrupt this regularly scheduled programming to let you all know it is in fact a drum this guy That's a drum, folks. You'll have to excuse my ignorance. Um, I have not caught a drum before, and I knew it did not quite resemble a carp, with the exception of maybe the fact that it had kind of a weird um, uh, body type, or, you know, it, it didn't, it looked kind of sort of like, but it didn't have that stupid carp face. They all have, uh, trust me, you see a carp, you'll know they've got a stupid carp face <clears throat> so um it bothered me for a little bit and i kept thinking racking my brain of all the fish species that are in oklahoma and drum came to mind so i looked them up and lo and behold is in fact a drum drum is typically regarded as a trash fish it's usually a bycatch people aren't intending on catching it however um i've been uh I have never never had the pleasure of tasting drum, but my assumption is it probably does taste good if done right. So we're going to fillet it up and we are going to taste it and we're gonna see what it tastes like. So um, we will return you back to that regularly scheduled programming. And also I'd like to give a uh, heads up that we will be doing some trot line um, again in the very near future. And if this pans out well and this drum tastes as delicious as I think it might, um, hopefully we'll pull up some more drum and we'll do some more recipes on that drum. So back to your regularly scheduled programming. Um, that kind of about does it for the uh, trot lining. Um, that is one of my more favorite ways to 
fish outside of rod and reel fishing. I used to be kind of a big fan of jug lining and slight rant uh, alert. I, jug lining, the problem is with jug lining is that it is just about impossible to keep track of all of your jugs. And so one or two or a lot of them may go get drifting off and go missing. And then it just kind of pollutes the environment. In fact, that jug, the uh, that noodle that you guys saw earlier, me wrapping up my trot line in, is one of the jugs that I have found in one of the lakes, uh, tangled up in something that I had to cut free. <clears throat> so usually if I see them, I pull them up if they're clearly and obviously been sitting there for a long time. And generally, if you see one jug, um, it's not likely, uh, it's likely a lost one because usually if someone puts out jugs, they put out multiples. Now, it can be mildly tricky with the trot lining um, versus jugs because you got more hooks to deal with, but you just have that one line and it, to me, I personally think is a little bit easier. Um, uh, it's just as effective, um, if not more effective than jug lining in a lot of cases. So um, you'll, we'll probably do some more trot lining this, especially this hunting season. So that about does it for today. Um, I know it's been a little bit since you guys have heard from me and seen a video on this channel. I'm going to do my best to make sure that they keep coming, the videos keep coming uh, as consistently as possible. And we will bring you guys along for deer season, for deer hunting, and we will be doing some fishing while deer hunting. Especially as the weather starts cooling off, we get that fall fishing going on. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And uh, comment below if any of you guys know what on earth type of a fish that was, that carp, uh, or what type of carp it is. Um, comment below. <clears throat> it may just be something that I'm kind of unfamiliar with. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm not super familiar. So if you like this video, um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos, just hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification so you never miss a video. And until the next time, we will see you all on the next fishing adventure.